Amazing. Here's Hillary curled up on Sharon's lap. For most people. Hi, Hillary. Yes. There, take a look at the camera. I got a light on her, so she's squinting a little bit. Well, I went running off hiding as soon as I came out, but I did get a quick shot there of the little California quail. Well, there's the there's the answer to our mystery. That bird call is actually those California quail. <laughs> and uh, Sharon's going to feed them right now. Okay. They won't come out while we're out here. No. They'll wait for us to go back in. Yeah. Oh no. There's the picture of the dogs. Take the dog picture. Well, I don't want to make them in, put them in the video. I think the quail have figured out that you're putting the food out. There we go. And here they come. It's uh, K-Town Drifters at the bottom Creekside Theatre at the bottom Wood Lake Road, country, Lake Country, BC. That's in Winfield for those who are familiar with the yeah, area. Yeah, in Winfield. And we're going to be and there. It starts and at seven thirty. Are you going to tell the people what? And we're, we're going to be taping. That's on Saturday night. We're going to be taping, and it's country music. And you can get your tickets at the door. So that's March seventeenth, and that's St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, St. Yep. Patrick's Day. So we're going to be doing the video. Uh, Sharon's going to be helping me with camera. I'm going to man one camera. She'll man another. And we'll probably have a, one of our, our son-in-law might help us with, uh, with a camera as well. Although he is taking still pictures. So I don't know if he'll be able to uh, have time to. Well, we're starting our day out with a little bit of cleanup. I uh, woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't get back to sleep and uh, so then uh, I ended up sleeping on the couch for a while and ended up sleeping in. Anyway, we won't be able to get away with that much longer because the markets are going to be starting soon and we'll be getting up five and six in the morning every day and working till late at night so we'll enjoy it while we can. Now we got to go and vacuum. Don't say that on the camera. <laughs> you look beautiful. Right. No, we were just, um, my we have four boys, right? And yeah. so uh, my husband, when my boys turn 13 or 14, takes them on a trip that they've wanted to go forever, right? So he took my first son. Um, he's 16 now. He took him a couple years ago. And then my second son, he's taking him today to Hawaii. Oh, <laughs> for a whole my week. goodness. All by themselves, they get to go and do a bunch of guy things. Wow. So the other boys are at home right now. Okay, so because you were asking about a cleanser, I already make a cleanser. Okay. So that's the kombucha facial cleanser. Oh wow. Okay, so that will clean all the makeup off, and it's just made with um, the the olive oil soap and the coconut oil soap, organic that I make at home. Okay. Okay, and that's it's got great. Green clay in it, French green clay. It's got citrus or, um, eucalyptus. Yeah, oh, it's that's got, nice. Um, kombucha. 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 kombucha facial so. cleanser. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then this is the toner, the kombucha facial toner. Oh, yeah. And I make the kombucha myself as well. I make it with um, organic red tea, green tea, black tea, and nettle. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Thank and you. And let's see what else did I bring you. Oh, this is to die for. The sugar scrub. This is an exfoliant. So oh, this is... Grapefruit um, vanilla oh, sugar. You can smell it. It's so good. Mmm. 
So this, this, you don't put water in it. You put it, you get your hands wet and you scoop a little bit into your hands. And then it's a natural exfoliant. Okay. Um, most people are used to, ladies are used to using um, uh, alpha hydroxy acid, I think it is what it is, uh, to actually exfoliate their skin and uh, do a chemical peel. Organic sugar actually naturally contains that. Oh, so, okay. Um, so, do I just put it on and you, then you leave scrub it, it on? No, you scrub it. Like, oh, like you, you scrub it. You scrub okay. it. And, and the sugar, it'll start to melt so it's not too rough on your skin. Oh, okay. It won't damage your skin, but it'll it get off all the old dead skin cells and oh, okay. moisturize at the same time. Okay. Okay. Did you see this, Fred? Did you get that? The, Getting the, it uh, now. The grapefruit vanilla sugar scrub. Turn the label a bit. Definitely. So what I do is I go between these two and these two. So so after I've got the clay makeup on and everything, and then you want to wash it all off, yeah. right? I'll use the uh, kombucha facial cleanser, yeah. the toner, and then you've got the kombucha um, lotion. Yeah. And then that's good. Yeah. And every couple days or every week, you can use the sugar scrub. Okay. I myself use the sugar scrub almost every night because I'm prone to acne, and it keeps my acne down. Oh. And same with my clay makeup. It keeps everything, you know... And stuff. I know I'm in my 40s and I shouldn't be having acne, but that's all due to the <laughs> the, the xenoestrogens oh. and stuff. And because I'm still doing a slow detox of the xenoestrogens, I still get acne. But when I was in my um, heaviest detoxification modes, the acne was just awful. Oh, really? But that's just how it, it can it can um, express More itself. Fun, yeah. It comes out through your, your pores and right. your skin. Right. And then, of course, if you look on the website, you'll see lots of links to the xenoestrogens and how it's linked to breast cancer, prostate cancer, um, boys uh, having smaller genitalia when they're born or misformed or misshapen, um, growing breasts, uh, lower sperm count, and it's in everything from your shampoos to your hair conditioners to your lotions to your sunscreen to mm. your lipstick to your foundation. It's just everywhere, and it's by tons of different names. Wow. Tons of different names. So. Wow. And then, I don't know, do you use hair gel? Yes. That's my kombucha hair gel. Oh. And all these things are made from organic and food-grade ingredients. I don't use chemicals. No, I so, know. I know you don't. Yeah. That's why I like your products. Yeah. If yeah. you can't eat it, don't put it on your skin. No, exactly. This is probably more for Fred than you, but you could use it too. This is, um, I call it my kombucha scalp treatment. What it is, is it's, um, it helps to uh, regenerate hair growth. I mean, well, you, can't say, I you, you can't say that because of Health Canada, because all my products are registered with Health Canada, so I can't make any claims. No. But my husband's 53, and he has a full head of hair. And all of his brothers, they're all bald. Well, balding or, you know. Oh, yeah. I usually like to say or kind of give people an idea. You might remember back in 2008, uh, the Canadian government banned BPA from baby bottles. And the reason they did that was because there was a lot of scientific research and studies done on, um, on, on BPA in, in bottles, and baby bottles, and they found that infants that were drinking approximately three to four baby bottles a day for that size and weight of a child, it was equivalent of them getting one birth control pill a day. That's how much estrogen for that size, like if you you know re reduce it to the to the weight that they're um, the size and weight they are, so that was just way too much estrogen, xenoestrogen, xeno meaning foreign, foreign estrogen, um, that the infants were getting, and they found they were having kidney and liver dysfunction problems, um, all kinds of endocrine disrupting hormonal issues and stuff like that. So, so the Canadian government banned that, and then they um, actually have just recently declared BPA as a toxic substance. So all my bottles are BPA free, and I've just picked up some bottles um, today that are going to be glass, so we're going to be converting a lot of these things to glass. Some people still want the, the plastic, so we're going to kind of try to have both. So. Well, I'm glad we got your natural stuff. Yeah. That's what I'm appreciating. Yeah. Well, did I ever tell you how, like, how this got started, why I started this? No. In my early 20s, I started suffering from ovarian cysts, which is a, an estrogen dominant situation. Um, we, I got married quite young when I was 18, but we want, didn't want kids until my husband finished university. So um, we didn't have kids for, you know, about, I think it was about eight years or whatever. So anyways, early on, I started suffering from these ovarian cysts. And then I started suffering from fibrocystic breast disease, which is a precursor to breast cancer. 
And um, the doctor said, well, just have kids because it'll fix everything. Well, it, having kids, I had four of them, didn't fix everything. No. And then I started developing lumps in my breast, which were precancerous lumps. And so it was kind of like, okay, something has to be done. And then I started digging in and doing some research and found out about the xenoestrogens. And all pesticides, most pesticides, most petroleum-based products are all known xenoestrogens. So what I had to do was I had to change all my beauty and body products, which I couldn't do uh, because I knew all the girls at the health food store and they all said, well, it all contains this stuff. Even the organic stuff at the health food store I was like, okay, then I have to make my own. Well, what I'd like to see is if you could make me some eyeshadow. I know everybody wants. <laughs> well, the makeup, the makeup that you that, that you were trying, that you've been using, was born out of basically people, ladies at the market saying, "I need makeup, I need yeah. makeup, I need makeup." And I'm like, I know, I know, I know. And eyeliner. I know. So, um, so I wasn't actually planning on bringing the makeup out till the summer, but I've had so many requests, so it's like, okay, so I got the basics out now. Yeah. Um, I'm working on a mascara. Um, yeah, eyeliner. and a mascara too. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. Um, I've actually had multiple business offers. Um, the the recent, most recent one was a university professor from uh, Vancouver. She tried my products in the summer and she really liked them. And um, she is a university professor of business and she wanted to bring my products to market. She's already done that with another beauty and body product line. So we explored some of those options. She flew out and stuff, but um, we're just gonna wait for you know a bit of time to see if we're gonna go any further with that. Um, I've had a couple other business offers, another university professor from the University of Alberta. Um, everybody want, two people have wanted to private label it. Um, couple investors and basically I'm just saying no at this point because it seems like the moment you want to go uh, too big too fast they want to change the ingredients um, they want control they, they, they want my story um, they want everything yeah. because I didn't do all this hard work to have some big company swoop in and change everything and, and, no. and make it a marketing That's blitz. Right. The so we're, out. we're oh, just yeah. gonna enjoy a little bit of uh, organic apple juice that we got where else the farmers market the Bonnie again. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> See, yeah, I love, the in and that's why I love the farmer's market, because you have that individual interaction yeah. and, and contact. I absolutely love that. Yeah. The Lugol's iodine is fabulous for detoxifying estrogen and xenoestrogens. Most people are actually deficient in iodine. It does amazing things for it. But one of the easiest ways, if you can't locate the Lugol's iodine, but you want to test yourself, to see if you're um, deficient in it, is just go to the pharmacy, and it's not behind the counter. My mom used to paint it on my owies, you know, if you got a, a, a cut or a sore, so they used to use is iodine. Um, it's not for ingesting this particular one, and what you do is you just paint it on your arm or you paint it on your stomach. Um, yeah, I, I have iodine from the health food store. I don't. That's know. a different one. It's not. It might be local, so I'm not sure. It, I don't think so because I know I've had that one. You need to get the one from the pharmacy. And what well, ends up happening from the pharmacy, I'm not sure. What ends up happening I'll is if, you, if, if your if your patch that you see that's red goes away in a few hours, you're deficient. Oh. It should last for two to three days. Not bright red, but you should yeah. be able to see a nice brown patch. And the faster it, it disappears, the more deficient you are. So what I used to do is I used to actually paint it on my ovaries and I used to paint it on my breasts and it just absolutely amazing. Or if you have um, menstrual cramps and stuff like that, literally painting it on your, oh, your I ovaries. Used to, I used to have such bad men yeah. menstrual cramps. You can paint it all right where, your, right where your uterus is and literally within a half an hour most times the cramps will go away. Really? I wish I knew that when I had them. I know. Cause it's, yeah. There's something called... Um, Estrogen-induced coleostasis, and all that means is that your gallbladder and your basically gets um, gummed up with stones and sludgy bile, and can you know eventually become non-functioning and have to be removed. And a lot of people have had their gallbladders removed, uh, men and women, and they found that um, over the years that their estrogen will will create this situation. So. Um, I went through a lot of detoxification protocols that were very specific to clean out, cleaning out your gallbladder and I passed tons and tons of stones and I have probably done at least 50 of these gallbladder liver flushes. I used to be yellow. That's how like my skin was all yellow because everything was all backed up, right? If you get a stone that won't quite pass because it's yeah. too large, yeah. you can have a, you can be a lot of pain. You can yeah. end up in the hospital. Yeah, there definitely. You go. Now you got... And you can take that back with you so you have the 
and have some nice cake and stuff. So that's kind of everything. Yeah, well, thank you. You're welcome. So, there you go. Well, that's great, Bonnie. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming and bringing those things to me. You're welcome. Enjoy. I'm, I'm going to enjoy them. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Bonnie. Yeah, you're welcome, Brett. Yeah. All right, exactly. thanks, guys. Oh, thank you so much. All right. Give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. For all your info. Bye. Bye, Bye Bonnie. Information. Isn't she? Yeah, she sure she's is. She's just loaded with information. Yeah, she's, she's a, a great person. Boy, she really seems to know her stuff, I tell you. She sure does. She knows a lot of stuff. This is Hillary in action. She's got arthritis. She's 15 years old. So I just made us a nice little sandwich for lunch. This is Sharon's. Hi. We had a great visit with Bonnie. And if you want to keep up with Friend Sharon's reality show, please click on subscribe.